This fall, six cities prepare for two rebels with a cause. with a cause comedy tour tickets on sale now at louderwithcrowder.com slash tour isn't it wonderful in all the years we've been married we've done some marvelous things this however is truly a miracle thank you nama nama whatever Whatever your name, Mrs. Noah. I love you, Mrs. Noah. And I love you. Oh. Shall we? Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. That is a lot of shit. I'm leaving you. Ah, that's that's a few pounds heavier sip for all of us after Thanksgiving. I don't know about you. What, and what, tired. Yeah. Hold oh, on, I'm getting some of my left headphone. Uh, yeah, we all put on a few. You're getting tired. You're not tired. You slept. Well, from Turkey, it always makes you tired, remember? That's not true. That's a myth. Uh, glad to be with you <laughs> after Thanksgiving. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? You can comment below if you did. At this point, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, you can all talk amongst yourselves. We have a lot to get to today. First off, let's start with this. Alyssa Milano uh, is a Nazi. To begin with, facts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about what's uh, what's going on in China. A uh, few reasons that this matters. I know you're saying, "Well, I've heard about this." I know well, you may not really know the ins and outs. Also, it relates to you more than you may think. And for that, we'll actually go to uh, the north of our border, Canada, to sort of see some of the striking similarities. They're terrifying. Yeah. Um, equally racist. Uh, we'll also be talking about Disney. Disney's been flopping. I don't know if you know this. There's some Yay. big wins, silver linings here. The woke film's not doing all that well, and uh -huh. Gosh, this just since we did, we haven't been here since last Tuesday. Uh, Fauci's gone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a I've time to close on the Fauci. So there's a lot to get to. There are a lot of wins to celebrate. He'll never really go away. No, he'll never go away. He'll never go away, especially if he you know gets wet or you feed him after midnight. <laughs> it's like a genital wart. <laughs> yes. Ugh. Do those not go away? I nope. think you can get them burned off, but they're there forever, friend. My doctor's a horrible liar. All right. <laughs> Gerald A., how are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Was your Thanksgiving okay? It was good. Yeah? It was like I got some rest, which I needed. Yeah. I ate some food. I got some ham? sleep. Yeah, we had ham. We good. had smoked turkey. And sm I don't know. Like, I don't like We talked about this. We don't. I don't like turkey that much. It, I realize now after having had a smoked turkey or if you have a fried turkey, I feel like people have just been screwing with me my whole life, like mm -hmm. having me eat that dog crap that was normal turkey when yeah, this yeah. was always available. Yep. Like I ate it, and like, this is so much better that it makes me mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, have you, did you feel that the first time you ate non-oven turkey? You're like, this oh, yeah. This was an option? Yeah, first smoked turkey was the best. Ugh. <laughs> it's like fried chicken. You're like, what? what is this? What is this? <laughs> Why is it so much greater? I've than... been eating dog food all this time. This makes no sense. When I could have eaten this. <laughs> Like, it's not as good for you. You're like, but who cares? Who it's emotionally care. better for me. What, am I retired? <laughs> emotionally better. <laughs> and you know him. You love him. The fastest man on his feet. Uh, we have tickets. Only tickets left are at the one show in Baltimore this weekend, December 3rd. It's the last leg of the tour. Go to ladderwithcredit.com slash tour. Four tickets. Baltimore, Maryland, December 3rd. Dave Landau, how are you, sir? Ahoy. Coming to you, Omar. I'm good. Oh, wait. What? From The Wire. Oh, ah. I never watched it. Never watched The Wire? I'm, I tried to. I couldn't get into it. 
It, you got to pass season one. Season one, you're like, why is this Law and Order? And then it takes off. Oh, does it? Yep. Okay, that was sort of like Oz. I'm like, ah, how many sodomy scenes do you need? Pretty much, <laughs> that stays the same. Does it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> one more. It's a constant. Yeah, it's pretty much just J.K. Rowling <laughs> just having sex with men. <laughs> okay. Uh, Not J.K. Rowling, J.K. Simmons. Yeah, I was gonna say J.K. <laughs> Rowling. That was the inspiration. J.K. Simmons. I thought it was weird that the warden was named Dumbledore. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Hogwarts there are broomsticks. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Slytherin! Oh, they, they, he does Slytherin. Oh, yes, oh. it makes sense now. <laughs> Lay up. Dunk. Now, before we move on here to Alyssa Milano and Twitter, and we're going to be talking about China quite a bit. We're going to be talking about Disney. But um, this just happened this morning on CNN. Uh, diversity is very important. It is. And by that, I mean it's not. Mm. You know when people say diversity is our strength? Greatest strength. It's it's No. Here's the thing. Diversity is never your greatest strength, and sometimes it can be a detriment. Now, it's not always a detriment, but for example, you know, if you look at combat units, they're not like, everyone have, every, let's everyone be diverse. Everyone do your own thing. No, you have to be unified, certainly as far as ideas, as far as missions. So sometimes diversity is not your strength, uh, and it never seems to be your greatest strength. However, we have more diversity now, and I will say diversity is good, for example, like at drinking fountains, like at diners. Voting, in other words, good things, Civil Rights Act. Yeah. Thank you, Republicans. But the issue is that not every place has equal representation. Now another sector uh, has been resolved, and CNN is happy about this. Uh, take a look. That is the New York Philharmonic, the oldest symphony orchestra in the U.S., and for the first time, women outnumber men in the group 45 to 44. It's a big <laughs> leap forward Yay. from its founding in 1842 <laughs> when women were not allowed to join at all. Here it comes. The New York Times reports that, quote, the orchestra's new female majority could prove fleeting, though, as it still has 16 vacancies because of a hold on auditions during the pandemic. It's also important to note that the New York Philharmonic is still lacking when it comes to women holding leadership positions. Quote, the orchestra has never oh. had a female musical director. Oh, come on. And there's a glaring lack of black and Latino members. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this close. I don't know if I, 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 by the way, I can say definitively that I speak for all of us when I say, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I get it. German shepherds, fire hoses, a drinking water. Yes, racism, horrible. Slavery, right, absolutely right, bad. Yeah. Black people, absolutely should have the right to vote. Jim Crow South, okay, I get all of it. But now we're at woodwinds? <laughs> well, also, I think you could tell there was a lack of black and Latino members by the terrible music. Yes. <laughs> there, there aren't enough black people playing the clarinet. No, they come in and they're like, hey, it's a black guy with a pan flute. And you're like, tell him to leave. I yeah. don't know understand what he is. Yeah. What is he doing here? He's bringing in a harmonica. If he's playing a yeah. steel guitar, you know, playing some blues. Absolutely. Right. Just like if we want someone to play some kind of metal in a minor chord, we're going to find a white guy, preferably a Viking, maybe an Italian like Dio. <laughs> this is when you're talking about, you're talking about the Philharmonic. I assumed they were all Asian yeah. because if they didn't make it, their parents would beat the crap out of them yeah. with their trumpet. Yeah, when the classics start including the bass riff from My Girl, yes. you'll see <laughs> a lot more diversity in the Philharmonic. Yeah, you also know it wasn't diverse. The the panel of people talking about it, we didn't picture it. It was two women and Don Lemon, nary a man to be found. Yes, among them. <laughs> <laughs> they're underrepresented at the Philharmonic. Sure, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, might I point your attention to the top forty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's uh, good news. There's no white people to be found. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of one of those areas that's not only a meritocracy, but uh, you know, black people do really well with music. As a matter of fact, they do really well with white people with their music. And this is not new. You go back to, yeah. I mean, you go back to Eddie, you go back to the Supremes, you go back to them, you go back to Johnny Mathis, you go, period. Go back any point. Black people make better music. Why? Because God favors them musically. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's fair. true. <laughs> Unless you have never heard of Motown or, right. you know, <laughs> Phil Spector who had to point guns at people. Right. But or in fairness, to men. they were all black making the good music. He yeah. was just wearing the stupid wigs. You ever meet a black guy who can't sing? No. It surprises nope. you. Nope. Yeah, occasionally. I guess I've met my friend Jeff, yeah. Yeah, well, like Kanye. <laughs> He well, tries to sing every now and then in his songs, and it's just like, it doesn't work. Rap singing is inappropriate on every level. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I wish that every rapper would stop. Yes. I so, think that's, they should join the Philharmonic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At a certain point, when do you stop caring? Everything has to be a quota. Like, look, look, look. 
Black people, they make up a disproportionate number of singers. And of, why? Because they happen to be good at it. Okay. Asians tend to make up a disproportionate number of people who are playing stringed instruments, woodwinds, brass. They're very good. And by the way, these are also areas we had, uh, you know, uh, Choi Sauce. He was a percussionist yeah. at yeah. NYU. Just let people do what it is that they want to do. Also notice that the seats are empty because uh, they were holding back auditions during the pandemic. No, it's because you said no men need apply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Biggie used to do rap battles in Brooklyn on a street corner, and they were like, who's this kid? He wasn't sitting there with a fiddle going at somebody else. <laughs> uh, Sorry, gosh. It's, just not, it, it's just not part of the culture. Who cares? Can we start a movement for more white people in sports? Yes. Well, that would be racist, though. Why? We you want, would, you want people to get hurt? Hats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be the same thing. Like, I don't care. I just want to see a good football game. I could care less if the entire team has no white representation. It doesn't matter to me. There are only two sports where there's more white representation. Well, obviously mm. golf, but we're talking Hockey. about real sports. Hockey, and yeah. that's just because of cold climates. <laughs> and then strongman competitions. And that's, that's true. because naturally the crazy Norwegian and Eastern Europeans, they just have these maximal strength capabilities genetically that right. nobody yeah, else yeah. has. Yeah. Makes sense. And then tennis, but then Venus and Serena came by and they were like, well, we're not good at this either. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know what? They were ahead of the curve on the trans sports athletes let's go to milano uh and her tesla problem so Alyssa yeah. milano and you can comment below do you feel like this is a big win is your life more complete now <laughs> <laughs> that there are more women in the philharmonic by one yeah but yeah by one person and yeah. there's also 16 open seats because no one wants to be in it. right <laughs> next up is just going to be a bunch of guinea hairy short men in the rockets <laughs> yeah. i wonder how ticket sales are doing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've very welcomed the pandemic. They're like, yeah, that's why there's no one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just walking in like, oh, oh, look, look at all the faces. There are so many women of color. It's a Christmas miracle. Oh. <laughs> no, it's a shitty orchestra now. Yeah. Just old women in $8,000 minks that have been covered in red paint since the 80s. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <sighs> all right. So uh, let's go here. Alyssa Milano, crazy person. Uh, and then also our friends, the Hodge twins. This is a story that was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I just really feel like this encapsulates everything you need to know about the Twitter meltdown that's taking place uh, now that Elon Musk has taken over. So there was an exchange. Milano tweeted this out. Charmed is where she's from, for those who don't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, the bitch. Who's the boss? <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And then something else. So Milano tweeted uh, out. <laughs> and see if you can spot where it's um, hmm. functionally retarded. I gave back my Tesla. Right there. I <laughs> nailed it. Hold on. I gave back my Tesla. I bought the VW EV. I love it. I'm not sure how advertisers can buy space on Twitter. Publicly traded companies' products being pushed in alignment with hate and white supremacy doesn't seem to be a winning business model. And the Hodge twins nailed it. They responded, uh, friends of the show. Volkswagen was literally founded by Nazis and Hitler, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, All kinds of Nazis. <laughs> I saw that over the weekend and I was crying laughing because I just read the first part and I was like, how stupid are you? Yes. Then I saw that and I was like, excellent. In her, sel <laughs> in her selfie, she just blurs the Hugo Boss emblem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Her kid's in the Oshkosh behind her like, ooh, oh, don't want that boy, either. I don't want that. Oh, no. Elon responded with... I just love that the wealthiest man in the world is basically, like I said, a 4chan autist. He responded with the 100 <laughs> emoji and then a bunch of crying and laughing faces. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. This is like I've, I've told you this before. If you can't make electric vehicles, if Elon Musk cannot make Tesla work in California, the left has no path to making EVs work. It's not about going electric, although that can't be done here in the next decade. It's not fee it's not possible. Certainly not possible with exclusively renewables because you're going to have to charge your car, not to mention the fact that the left has this war against nuclear, which creates zero carbon emissions. But if you can't make it work in California and Elon Musk has to leave to Texas to make the greenest car company function, <laughs> at what point do you say that your agenda is completely useless? And keep in mind, people like Alyssa Milano, they all loved Elon. Oh, yeah. Loved him. Until they found out that Elon, by the way, is not a white supremacist, right. just supports free speech. So these are some of the things that Alyssa Milano tweeted out for Elon. I am not too long ago. I am in awe of Elon Musk, and I continue to be amazed by my Tesla motors. <laughs> Another one. Four people you'd want to have di dinner with, dead or alive. Mine, Jesus, Roberto Clemente, John Lennon, Elon Musk. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which is funny because it's similar to mine. Mine would have been Jesus, Roberto Duran, mm. John Lennon, so I could slap him in Elon Musk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now she buys the only electric car that still has an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> Don't but, forget the cigarette lighter. Right. Yes. By the way, I don't think that's how things you owe money for work. You can't just go, here, take it back. Yes, but you still owe us money. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Okay, fine. You paid for it in cash. Here, take it back. Okay. Fine. Any you still have to make payments. To, no, any liberal that wants to do that, if you fully own your Tesla right now and you just can't stomach holding on to it and you want to give it back, I'll take it for free. Yes. Off your hands. I don't want you to be burdened with that. Yes. Well, she's also the right same now. idiot that had the crocheted mask yes. and was with telling everybody holes. to wear it. <laughs> yeah. It looked like your, uh, your grandma knitted an afghan. Yeah, like and those crappy yeah. little wool slippers that yeah. you would yeah. just use to shock your brother. Yes, and you're like, you <laughs> can see your mouth. And she's like, right, but, I mean, it's the point of it. Yes. No, no, it's no, it's, it's, it's not. the gesture. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's like say, that's like that's like rolling on half a condom and being like, "Well, I tried." Yes, <laughs> or like you know, putting in some some breathing holes, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's a grasshopper in a mason jar. Yeah, <laughs> ah, you know, I need a little air. I'm just cutting off the tip here. Yeah. <laughs> And that's weird. It's just, yeah. I'm, uh, what are you doing? I'm uh, cutting your birth control in half to make it, to stretch it. Yes. What do you want? I'm a child of the Great Depression. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the gesture. Waste not. Waste not, what not. Now, we've been following Elon Musk's uh, sort of red pilling for quite some time, but we actually here now finally have more photographic evidence. He tweeted uh, this picture, and I don't think it's by, uh, I don't think it's happenstance that he tweeted this. It kind of amidst the Alyssa Milano controversy. Controversy, what am I saying? Stupidity. Uh, he tweeted this picture out with a caption, my bedside table. He says it's a bunch of caffeine-free Diet Coke. I don't know. Is that a flare gun? I no. think it's a uh, like a cosplay gun. Or yeah. It doesn't look like real. It's like a 3D printed. Yeah. And a pirate game. gun. I mean, <laughs> baby no, steps. It's the George Washington uh, flintlock. Yeah, well, that should that you know? shouldn't just be sitting there. And is like, is he planning on using that for home defense? He's a billionaire. <laughs> he could, where, where else yeah. do you put it? <laughs> a safe? Yeah. He wants to wake up and look at. Put it, it in, yeah. like you know, like I don't know, shrink wrap it, something. <laughs> He's ah. got the David Barton approach. Just yes, everything out, touch it all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's his bedside table, and of course, getting in on the trend, uh, there are some other uh, celebrity bedside tables who tweeted in response. Um, well, Alyssa Milano, they, she showed her bedside table. Well, that makes oh, sense. Gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, new keys, yeah. Oh, I guess we have some more here. They, this <laughs> yeah, just yeah, happened yeah. recently yeah, this morning, yeah. I guess. Uh, former Vice President Joe Biden tweeted out his bedside table. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's wow. a little rough right there. Oh, that's I didn't see that run through, that and that is far rougher than I would have <laughs> yeah. approved. Clearly. I'll be honest. It, it, they had to clean it up to yes. get there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, normally it's just a, a picture that says, I am the president of the United States. He has to be reminded every morning. Someone did a little so. bit of photoshopping. Yes, on a word of the day calendar. To make it more palatable. Yes. You should see his advent calendar. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, another one, I guess, just tweeted out, I guess, this morning. Congressman Eric Swalwell's mm. bedside table. We now see. <laughs> 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 for people listening on audio. By the way, leave a review. That helps, but just just go watch the video because this is a live show, Monday through Thursday. It's live. Nothing up our sleeves. 10 a.m. Eastern. You can watch it here on YouTube. You can watch it on Rumble right now. If you're watching on Rumble, please, if you're on YouTube, nothing would make me happier than to see this number tick down on YouTube and the number go up on Rumble like Ed Rooney's attendance computer. Please. Head on over to Rumble, and of course you can listen to audio uh, on uh, on Apple, Spotify, Android, wherever it is, and Mud Club. Today we'll actually have um, uh, Ginger Snap come in because yeah, he actually yeah. did his uh, he did his uh, I believe his masters. I didn't even in know China. he had a masters, and I didn't know he got it in China. Yeah, well, he so loves the things. Asian ladies. <laughs> I don't even he, know this guy. Yes, he does. He speaks Mandarin. <laughs> what? He does. Yeah, he does fluently. Really? Yeah, I mean, he maybe yeah. he doesn't, but to me, he does. Yeah, we have no way of knowing. Yeah, I guess I yeah. can't prove it. He would just say it would be like, yeah, it sounds about right. Okay. right. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, he made noises yeah. that don't sound American. Right. I guess you're Chinese. It's unappealing. Yeah, it seems like I wouldn't want yeah, to. It seems like I wouldn't want to hear that, you know. I wouldn't want to yell at me while I was learning piano. Right. All I said was hi. It's just very intense language. It sounds like something that I would have heard shouted across the room at the former Philharmonic. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so before someone had piano keys jammed into their neck by an angry mother. Yeah. You miss C minor. Okay. Now it's a the bunch of parents. It be. <laughs> so Disney. Let's before we get to China, Disney, uh, and this also relates to uh, China because it's Disney. Uh, they have uh, attempted, of course, to be wokeifying the media by design. By the, mm -hmm. by the way, this isn't an accident. At a certain point, you have to say when all the accidents, for example, or most of them, as they relate to voting issues, line up one way. Right. 
Okay, how does that always happen? When, when the media, when their mistakes in covering stories are falsely claiming that a story was Russian propaganda and it only leans one way, you say, okay, at a certain point, where is it a mistake? The same thing where when Disney, they're only pushing an agenda one way. You never, like Disney never accidentally promotes a traditional Christian nuclear family. You'd think like once it would happen by mistake. I'm trying to think of any times they've ever done it. Do you remember when white people used to be in commercials? So anyway. Barely. <laughs> I don't watch it's because I was watching the Macy's parade. I never see commercials, and I'm sitting there like there is like there's just no basic heterosexual, you know, no it's European like, American like white couple. Every it doesn't. It's I'm not saying it has yeah. to be, but just like not even one or two. Well, if it is, it's like a, a white girl, a black guy, and an Asian kid, and you're like, what happened? Yes, exactly. So those two made an Asian. There's oh, just lots of conversations happen. Dave. There's just a milkman <laughs> who leans his head in from the yeah, CCP. Exactly. So the film from Disney, Strange World. Uh, and it's a gay teen romance. Wonderful. Really? Mm. Uh, cool. It's also a climate change commentary. It's on track to not, I know you're saying like make a disappointing 100 million. No, lose Disney 100 Whoa. million dollars. Oh boy. Right. Cost them 100 million dollars. Yes. And I'm not even, I'm not even a math Philharmonic member. You're not. Nope. How would you pitch that with that budget? And people are like, yeah, that seems right. Yeah. Gay teen sex romance and climate change. Give them all the budget. Yeah, everyone loves gay sex and climate change. Yes. Especially at Disney World. Especially tweens. <laughs> yeah. So here's what do the thing. Kids love? It's flopped. It's going to cost them $100 million. And obviously we watched a good portion of the film so that you wouldn't have to. But we have some clips here. When you see the film, it's kind of easy to understand why it hasn't done well. Our son is on your ship. What did she just say? Honey, what are you saying? What is she saying? She said your son is on our ship. Dad? Dad? Uh, apologies if my dad what? is so dad. What is that sound? Is he licking the switch? Legend, <laughs> stop licking the switch. Legend, stop. Stop. What is that? You know, I'm a big fan of naughty behavior. <laughs> oh, when two people love each Do other. Stop talking! Stop talking! I will say the animation is hyper realistic. Yeah. It really Some is. of it really seems uh, very, very true to life. They just left Zemeckis in the dust. They did. <laughs> He's got nothing. Uh, I will say it's more, much more frighteners. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, hit the like <laughs> button, by the way, if you guys are happy to see this failure. And you can comment below because the YouTube algorithm does not want you to find us. So smash the like button. You can always hit the rumble button if you're on rumble. So here's why this is a win. Uh, the market has spoken, and you know, I've, I've yeah. talked about how boycotts don't always necessarily work when it's just boycotting a specific company. But an area where you can be pretty effective with boycotting is consistent consumption. So, like paying memberships or films, right? These aren't big ticket items. So, like boycotting, for example, Tesla by returning your Tesla, that's silly. Yeah. A stupid person would do that. A good way to boycott, <laughs> though, is when you have no interest in something whatsoever and you don't even know it exists. It's really just a maintenance yeah. cycle. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really how I do it. It's Well, it's incredibly effective. Yeah. Because you just keep doing what you're doing, yeah. and you build some momentum with that. You just keep liking the stuff you like, and yeah. don't try to get other people to like you for liking stuff you don't like. Exactly, and that's a perfect segue, because you know who agrees with you? Hmm. America. Ah. Let's compare some of the recent Hollywood successes uh, with the Disney failure. So Paramount, Top Gun, okay? Yeah. That made $1.45 billion, almost $1.5 <laughs> You know when it's done, it'll be close to $2 billion in its yeah. worldwide box office sales. Uh -oh. Their stock it, it increased Right before Top Gun came yeah, out. Yeah, during the promo, during the run-up when people saw they were promoting this, everybody was like, well, that's going to do well. Yes. And stock started shooting straight up. Yep, exactly. And by the way, it's not like it's a conservative film. It's just not an anti-American right. film. It's and also, just, by the way, it was a good film. It was a good movie, and it's it's a fun movie. Yeah. And it wasn't an it wasn't also anti it wasn't all inclusive but it wasn't anti that either it right. was just a movie yeah. and I think it's a good apples to apples comparison here because you have Top Gun it's a sequel yeah right it's a sequel to some beloved characters they've sort of become American icons same thing with Toy Story so in other words it's not like we're just taking a film that has no track record Top Gun okay 1.5 billion dollars Lightyear 200 million dollars by comparison Ooh. and it, <laughs> and their stock price. <laughs> plummeted right before the release of Lightyear because people saw it and said, ooh. Yeah, they, a lot of people didn't realize Tim Allen wasn't in it. Right. 
Yeah, they didn't know. Like, wait, Chris Evans. Like, I do. What? But it's Why? not his voice. It's completely unnecessary. Like, I would understand if it was a, it was a flashback to teenage Buzz Lightyear, but it's Buzz Lightyear. I mean, it's a toy. It's the same age, Buzz Lightyear. They just changed the voice because they didn't like Tim Allen's politics. Mm -hmm. So uh, to try and correct course, Disney, now they brought back Bob Iger as CEO uh, about a year after retiring. Uh, retiring. This Bob Chappick, I think, mm -hmm. is out. Don't, yeah. don't celebrate that just yet, by the way. Iger was sort of the architect for the woke uh, kind of business model. Yeah, it's not like Disney has been nailing the conservative market for a long time, and all of a sudden this guy comes in and changes it. They've been woke forever. They've been too busy nailing kids. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> yeah. that's a poor choice of words on my part. <laughs> So here's what happened is out, okay, they felt. And so what do they do? Do they come up with new ideas? Do they decide to correct course? Do they decide to innovate? Did they drag out uh, Walt Disney's corpse next to the Nazi paraphernalia? No. They decided, you know what? Hey, Tim Allen, we were wrong about that. And they gave him his own Santa Claus series. <laughs> I love it. They're and, not even going to put him in the movie that he's famous for. One of the roles. They're like, yeah, we need you back. What, do you want me to do a movie? We'd like a lot of them, like yeah. an entire series yeah. of things, an perhaps. An entire we series. <laughs> We'd like ten movies Yes, yes. <laughs> that are about an hour long apiece. Well, it's really just one film mm -hmm. that we stretch out with a bunch of filler. That's the current business model, yep, yeah. pretty much. And Sorry about canceling your show, moving it to another network, that whole thing. Right. You know, it's like Stranger mistake. Things, the last season. They're sitting there going like, okay, so three episodes, and ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you forgot the Freddy Krueger ripoff and all the musical montages. It's now nine. Yes. Hey, <laughs> should we stop making this now that the kids are 47? Yeah. <laughs> should we stop making it that the kid who went to the, uh, what is it, the Down Under Land, whatever it's called? The I don't Upside know. Down. How dare you? The Upside Down. Should we but, stop making it now that number 11? Was it 11? It, I, I should we stop making it now that 11 has people. menopause? Yeah. <laughs> She's appearing in osteoporosis commercials with Sally Field. You're not yeah. in hell. Those yeah. are hot flashes. She's <laughs> she's eating yogurt to help her stay regular with yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> the twist is that the monster is G. Gordon Liddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think this appeals to kids. No, I don't think so either. And why is Tom Selleck selling reverse mortgages? Yeah. Something about rodeos? I don't understand. Was this actually filmed in the 80s? <laughs> All right. So here, let's move on. Another win. Uh, and you can comment below if you've watched any of these films. I, I, I haven't watched them. I've, I've watched a lot of crap for you guys. I just couldn't stomach it this weekend. I watched the Macy's Parade, and that was enough with the Pride We're going to cover that. We're going to cover that tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. And the logo, the Legos thing we were talking and about. And so many fat Ugh. stick twirlers. There's one that people miss that I have that I, I filmed it on my phone. The quality is really low. <laughs> but it is exactly how you would expect a morbidly obese rangerette to go at That's the end of the Macy's break. The quality he of the texted recording. it to me and I was laughing. Yes. He texted it to everybody. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey guys, look at this. That's all that Thanksgiving need. Okay. I, I do wonder how close she was to the McDonald's float. <laughs> Well, she just did a costume change. Yeah, yeah, Grimace. Like, Can I stand over there? So uh, uh, Thanksgiving break. Okay, so we, there was a long break. Anthony Fauci gave a speech that he's stepping down from his position of director. Uh, of, I always forget uh, the NIAID. I always forget. What does it stand for? Something in an infectious yeah, disease. So, yeah. Institute so whatever. for something in infectious diseases. The point is, it's all ball bearings these days. So let's see, though, if in his speech you can spot the moment where in trying to sound grandiose, he screws up to a way that is laughably unintelligent. What I've accomplished in my 54 years at the NIH and my 38 years uh, as the director of NIAID, uh, although COVID is really, really very important, um, it is a fragment of the total 40 years that I've been doing it. So I'll let other people judge the value or not of my we will. accomplishments. But what I would like not people here, to remember listen. about what I've done is that every day for all of those years, I've given it everything that I have and I've never left anything on the field. <laughs> You're supposed to leave everything on the field. <laughs> Is he under, it's like, what? He's like, I never left anything on the field. I always kind of half-assed it on the field so I could save my zest for the locker room. <laughs> Does he? No, you're supposed to. You, you leave everything, you leave everything out the there. That's the yes. whole thing. Yes. Right? You ever seen any motivational speech? like, I want you to leave everything out there, damn it. And he's like, oh, okay, we'll break ourselves for you, coach. Got it. Good. He's like, but, you know, I just I got to save some for tomorrow. 
<laughs> I, I don't want to run plays or make sure, you know, I don't want to see how this works. Yeah. You know, I want everyone to know I left a lot in the tank for the swim back. Yes. <laughs> you left dead beagles on the field. We know that for sure. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Piles of them. Yeah. They weren't dead when I left them. Well, the flies did their thing. They were being consumed, and I let nature take its course. <laughs> Is the field the COVID slash AIDS graveyard you created? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the field of mediocre dreams. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, how do I do this worse than I did before with AIDS? If you, <laughs> if you build it, they won't come. Yes, exactly. Unless it's, in the, unless it's it. in the bathhouse. Yeah. Where I leave a lot in the tank then if for you when I get it. back there. I left everything in the bathhouse. <laughs> None on the field. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> He's wrong about it. And like, no one just asks him, like, hey, you know that's wrong, right? You know that you're sounding like the lazy prick you are that nobody wants to be in charge of anything? And so many people out there on Twitter, the virtue signaling, oh, thank you, Dr. Fauci, for saving us. I can't, oh, does anyone Lord. still believe this? This is a genuine question that I have. If, if you're out there right now, do you know anybody who still to this day thinks that lockdowns and the mask mandates, that these were a good thing? Comment below. I would love to see your comment below. I, I find it increasingly rare to meet those people. Yeah. They go, well, it's sort of shifted, right? Well, we did the best with the information that we had at the time, which is also untrue. But people who just full stop support what Fauci did, you can't find those people anymore. So I consider this a win that he's gone. Of course, he'll be replaced by some other Frankenstein monster. But for the time being, Dr. Fauci, I use that term loosely, it's time to close. Dr. Anthony Fauci is officially stepping down. I thought it was the right time. He has spent more than five decades working in federal government. You're wearing two masks. Isn't that theater? Uh, John, I don't think we're going to see lockdowns. Time to close. Endings and beginnings are ending and beginning now. I thought that the COVID outbreak would be over. The NIH and NIAID did not fund gain-of-function research to be conducted at the Wuhan Institute. A proposal that was peer-reviewed and given a very high rating for the importance of why it should be done. The United States is stronger, more resilient, and healthier because of him. I know that it's time for things to close. And he's going to live out his remaining years on Temptation Island. I'm sorry, that's Fire Island. <laughs> uh, no, so we, we talked about, you said, best information you had at the time. I kid you not, we can probably pull this. He was doing kind of his farewell tour to the media and was on one of the shows. I think it was like a CBS show. And said, they were like, hey, with, uh, with schools coming back in season, I know it's winter. Do you think we'll see any like, you know, you might see lockdowns for kids closing schools. And, you know, but that would have to be done on a, and I'm like. Are, we're still talking about this? Like yeah. closing down it's schools is still years. a thing in your mind? Like locking people down is still a thing in your mind? Did, did right you also hear his answer about the Chinese cover-up? It was like, well, there's a difference. It's not a cover-up just if they're not transparent. Yeah. <laughs> How about we wow. just admit, I don't know, you were wrong about everything? Yes. Uh, people are still afraid, so they're wearing masks? No, because uh, if, if, if I admit that I'm wrong, that'll be too close to admitting to lying. Right. I yeah. am the side. Because you used othering and name-calling and division to get your thing to work. Is that at all possible? Oh, well, excuse happened? me, Mr. Monday Morning Quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. have a baseball card. Do you? Yeah, I remember when I was watching uh, the uh, Chinese people get, uh, you know, uh, what was it? What were they using? To, they were using like uh, guns. Yeah, guns. <laughs> guns, fire <laughs> guns, whatever they could find. Point and you pull the trigger. I don't, what is yeah, that? one of them trigger things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when they were they were basically <laughs> what do you call them? They were just making them stay in their house by. Yeah, they were like ceiling. welding them in. Welding, welding the door shut. Yeah, they were welding the door shut. I was like that. <laughs> Probably isn't good. That might come over here to America. Yeah, that was that before I even bad. knew who Fauci was. Yeah, and he's like, they're doing a great job in China, and I'm very comfortable with them, mostly because they are my same height. That is neat. <laughs> and I want to thank, uh, I want to thank the fan that gave me the Fauci uh, baseball awesome. card this weekend. Did someone actually give <laughs> it? Yes, I'll bring it. Is it the authentic tops? It's the authentic tops. Wow. Holy wow. crap! Yeah. Collector's item. I'm if very excited one. about it. I and wish kids still video. collected baseball cards just because, like, some kid would be trading the yeah. like the the Fauci tops and every other. 
other kid just would burn it. Yeah, they're like, I don't want that. I don't want it. Do you play the COVID card on top of the Fauci card? Is that how this game works? It's like the Joker in your deck. You're just like, well, just get rid of it. Yeah, it's just the the limp wristed card. Those are playing cards. We just meshed three things together. Well, so did he. He's they such do. a piece of crap. I just he don't understand good. why no, no, anybody hey, was defending this guy. He's still a piece of crap. We've got the clip, I think, now, yeah. the, the one that oh, I was what? talking about, of Fauci saying that we could possibly be closing schools again. Oh, my God. Don't listen so, to him. Coming out of the holidays, Cheeky. should parents expect schools to shut down? I don't know, uh, shut uh, up. Margaret. I'm not sure. I don't when know, talk about Margo. Shutting down schools, but listen to what he says. Always He's like, oh, the collateral also issues should do it. <laughs> it is exactly. There's always the collateral issue. So you have to balance, and you do it in real time, depending upon the viral load of disease in your right, that's region. Enough. Whether, yeah, depending that's enough. upon the viral load of the disease in your region, we're going to shut down. And I know we're on YouTube, and so I have to be careful. We're going to shut down schools. Just look up the data on how COVID has affected the school age group. Don't. That's all I said. Don't. Just look up Don't stuff. do it. We'll get removed again no, I for just said citing actual statistics. Exactly. I didn't cite any statistics. No, I said do research. There's no. no proof that kids that stayed in schools that were allowed to stay open are far better off None. than the ones that Whatsoever. were shut down. No, this, no evidence. This is why you don't want hall monitors running your country. <laughs> I'm sorry. When people, it's not, it shouldn't always just be safety. This is a guy who just, he doesn't take into account freedom. He doesn't take into account negative consequences. This is, this has been an exercise in removal of freedoms in the name of safety. And by the way, it was a crock. But you also shouldn't have leaders only make decisions based on safety. That's not the only consideration to take into account. Fauci is proof positive. Mm -hmm. All of the great leaders on whom you, you, you look back throughout history, these were people who took risks. These were people who made some unpopular decisions. These were people who were rugged, whether you look at Churchill, who, by the way, was ousted I think within two years because he didn't social he, he didn't want socialized health care. Right. You look at George Washington, you look at Abraham Lincoln. You, take your pick. None of them were glorified hall monitors. Fauci should never be within striking distance in a position of authority that could actually lock down this country. He's not even elected. Think about how much power a completely unelected official who has worked in government his entire life. With no regard for the Constitution, think of how much of an impact that little shit had on your life. Pardon my language. But don't pardon my language. I can't think of anything more descriptive. Yeah. And by the way, the people that uh, bought the Fauci candles, <laughs> it's bad enough that there are candles, and I'm not a huge fan of burning candles to saints and all that stuff, and I understand. Some people are like, oh, whatever, it's not a big deal. Fine, I'm not even talking about that. But Fauci candles, really? Fauci candles. Isn't there, isn't there a line where it's like, thou shalt not worship Alive people, at the very least. Yeah, exactly. God. <laughs> like, come on. Well, and you're really not you supposed to worship Satan. No, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're not supposed to worship anybody but God. And having a candle to a guy, it's just like this is just beyond the pale. This is incredibly weird. Even if you're Levee and Satan, this. Yeah, just any he's not Satan. Johnny Cash, which seems passable. No. <laughs> I mean, I'll allow it. They, they Just make, for the uh, Fauci menorahs, too. They make they Fauci what? menorahs? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hated it. <laughs> Why? Is that, mm. is that the vaccine? Give unto us a king. That's what people want. People want to be ruled. They people do. want to, it became such, this is the thing with COVID, it just became, I am going to be all in, and I, I am just begging, I am waiting for the next opportunity to support an authoritarian regime and more control over our lives. For example, when you troll the left and you stick it to the left and people don't like it and sometimes it's immature, usually you offend them by saying something not all that offensive, maybe it's making fun of their diversity quotas or maybe you, you support freedom in one capacity or another. The left, if they really want to piss off the right, it's ha ha ha. Ah, they're going to lock you in your house. Ah, they're going to take your kids out of school. Ah, they're going to force you to get a, an mRNA injection. Think about that. There is a huge difference between, you know, engaging in playful trolling by pissing off the left and supporting more freedom, freedom of speech, mm -hmm. versus your, mo your modus operandi is removing someone else's freedom. It's absolutely insane. Thank God Fauci's gone. Speaking of freedom being removed, you may kind of, you may have glanced at this, and we want to give you the ins and outs. And explain to you why this matters, not only here in the United States, but also historically and as far as international relations. Look, first, let me set this up. China and Taiwan, um, that's going to be the epicenter of World War III if we run into that. 
not really Russia, just to be clear, we've talked about this. I, I, I don't know. There are a lot, here's the thing. There are a lot of shifting dynamics with Taiwan and yeah. with China. But right now in China, if you haven't been following this, uh, nationwide protests, they've been erupting uh, in response to, again, the government is now continuing and reinforcing even more strict draconian COVID lockdowns. A lot of the people have had enough. They're protesting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's a nation of people going Ralphie. Yep. Mm -hmm. They've had enough. Wow. They've just they've just decided you know, wiping the snowball from their eyes are going, okay, all right. They couldn't get Taylor Swift tickets either. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ticketmaster! <sighs> Is it Ticketmaster? <laughs> Ticketmaster. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> now, these are the biggest uh, protests since the 89 Tiananmen Square massacre, for those of you who uh, don't know. They started after a fire in, um, I want to make sure I read this correctly, uh, Urumqi in Xinjiang, right, killed 10 people um, who were locked down. So they were killed by the fire because they were locked down under the zero COVID policy. I think we have um, a clip to show you. For those of you who don't know these fires, their residents, the city has 4 million people. They have been barred from leaving their home for 100 days. So they've been barred from leaving their home for 100 yeah. days. You have now 10 people dead. At least 10 people. At least so 10 yeah, people. We've heard higher numbers right now, and we know that they're not going to release the actual data. And this part, we don't know if it's true. I have no reason to believe that it's untrue, considering that this had been done before. Some of these people may have been welded into their apartments, uh, just as what Dave just discussed uh, well, you had, can, had happened. In, there's uh, videos. 2019 yeah. that was happening. It happened back then. We don't have a video of it happening right now. Yes. But, but there are some reports on the ground yes. saying that it did happen again. I have no reason to disbelieve it because it did happen in, uh, in Chengdu. So think about this first, and this is the nation that Fauci praised repeatedly. They're yeah. doing a great job of bang up, and he's still defending. People say, what about the cover-up? Well, there's not so much a cover-up as not being transparent. You don't need conspiracies to understand the cooperation of global governments, of national governments becoming a one-world government. They are not in this. Not only do they not care about you, they don't care about their own citizens. We yeah. sh once upon a time, once upon a time, we would have been fighting China. We would have been at war yeah. with China if they attempted to have any influence in our society because we understand that it's a corrupt communist nation and they should have not some zero influence. This is a perfect example where diversity is not our strength. The ideology of China, anyone who comes from China who supports CCP or even the tenets of communism is not welcome here. And of course, our government should not be advised in any capacity from any members of the government in China yeah. for the reasons you seek. Well, and, and just for people who are like, oh, I can't believe they would do that. If, if anybody out there supported lockdowns, that is the natural end of lockdowns. That is the only way that a lockdown actually works. By the way, having Amazon packages delivered, having grocery stores open, having gas stations open, having certain places open is not a true lockdown. It just pisses you off and kills your economy. Yep. The only way to be effective is to do that. You literally lock people in their homes by force, if necessary, at gunpoint most of the time, because if they don't have enough food and die, that is the price you pay for a lockdown that is truly a lockdown. That's why we were saying, no, 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 no. This is a bad idea. Don't go this way. One, it won't work. And two, you don't want it to work, because if it does, that means people will die from starvation in their homes. Yep. You know, you're absolutely right. And by the way, everything is done at the end of a gun. Same thing with the IRS, yes. paying your taxes. This is why it's so silly when people say they're they're true pacifists. Now, I'm a non-interventionist. You can't be a pacifist because you're only afforded that luxury by living in a society that, of course, to some degree, lives under per a perpetual threat of violence. Lockdown. Yeah. What happens if I don't lock down? Now, the good thing is you guys here, and you can go join up at lightoutscutter.com slash mug club. We did mug club quarantine when the rest yeah. of the country quarantined. When even other conservative shows, they weren't on or they were broadcasting from their basement, we started doing two-a-days because we aren't beholden to anyone else. We're simply beholden to you. 
That's the beauty of actually being independent. But what, if you don't pay your taxes, you walk it through, what happens? People eventually, with guns, come and take you to prison. If you don't lock down, well, you see exactly what happens. They weld you in your apartment. They're just a little bit further down the trail. And by yeah. the way, so is Canada. We'll get to that comparison in just a second. But in Beijing, you had crowds gathering, and they were shouting out. And this is a big deal for yes, China. Yes, it is. No to COVID tests and yes to freedom. Here's a clip. And it's just kind of sad because you see they want their freedom, but they're still all, all out there wearing the masks. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just one of those things where you watch like you're not quite there yet, but you're taking baby steps. Well, I mean, it does take huge balls for what they're doing. Though. Exactly. And oh, that's yeah. the thing is they're terrified and they've also been brainwashed. Yep. You know, so there's so many levels of it. But I mean, I honestly I have so much respect for those people right now. It's a national it's it's a national movement of breaking off from a cult. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. Um, so you have, uh, for example, uh, also at Tsinghua University, um, students, they were shouting freedom of expression, rule of law. So these people don't want anarchy, uh, but they also want democracy. Here's a clip. And that matters because Xi Jinping, uh, Xi Jinping and the former president, they went there. Yeah. That's their alumni. Their, that's their alma mater. So, And I think we're going to get some information from uh, Ginger Snap on that. Is that his name still? Or yeah, it's Ginger Snap. Yeah, yeah, he went there. He wanted to go with a different name. They went there. That, so this is like the home, the mecca of basically the Chinese Communist Party. And yeah. they were saying that kind of stuff there. And by the way, it's not just that Chinese government people will come and, and take you away and kill you. They could very well do that. We've seen videos. They All they have to do is turn off your ability to participate in society. And they can do that with those social credit scores, the stuff that we've covered before, right? Giving you the opportunity to Which they're trying to incorporate loan, here in the United car, States. Yes. Have a job, anything like that. All they have to do is press a button mm -hmm. and you're done. Yeah. That's it. And these people, these people know that full well. They're not burning down a Walgreens that's you know, no. a franchise owned by their neighbors. They know that they could be run over with tanks. They know that they could have a bullet in the back of their head and a bill sent to their family, and they're deciding to protest anyway. This is a look into the crystal ball of what the left would have here if left completely unfettered with their power, unfetterment, in which well, case they're too fetterment. Oh, because the left doesn't realize they've just become an extension of authority. Yep. It's like all you guys are is pawns. Yep. You're just pawns for authority who's going to take yeah. out everybody else. And it, it's like you said, too, it is very easy to be passive when it doesn't affect you. Right. But believe me, once it affects you, you're not going to be passive anymore. Well, look at the worst association that people like us have. In other words, like I don't have a dog in the fight. We've talked about this with the primaries. I'll vote for someone who has an R next to them. The, the most hated person on the right, Donald Trump. Okay. So you know someone by the friends they keep. Sure, I think you also can uh, you also can judge someone by the enemies that they have. But let's say Donald Trump is the worst. All right, you guys, the party that welds people into their apartments, the World Economic Forum, right? If you look at what they're actually with the German government is still also bad enough. If you look at what's happening with with uh, with NATO, you look at what's happening with the UN, right? If you just look at the people you align yourself with, it's far worse than Donald Trump. Well, Fauci. You claim to be example. compassionate, but you don't have a problem with a man who disgustingly abuses animals. Right. And stop saying it's because of science. It's not acceptable. Look at what he does. Well, he hated Donald Trump, right? Of course, it was very difficult with Donald Trump. I had a much easier time working with the Chinese party. Hold on. Zzz, zzz. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to do your bidding. Yeah. These numbers are accurate, right? No COVID cases, zero. Right. Well, okay, good enough you. for me. All right. Two <laughs> bad sandwiches, please. I'm yep. going to the States. <laughs> <laughs> you've never lived until you've had Xi Jinping's yeah, oh. bat loaf. Oh, a little bat bit of mustard on that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Not... I'm going to throw a ball like Jelly a Jelly mustard. None of that yellow shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dry. You have any, excuse me, do you have any grape? Oop, and just punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> the... So in Shanghai. Just roll down the window and hit him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in Shanghai, protesters shouted uh, to Xi Jinping to step, keep in mind, this is, this is an authoritarian communist who will kill you and has no problem with that or jail you. Protesters were shouting, Xi Jinping, step down. The Communist Party, you need to step down. Here's a clip.
And the only way this works is if it's just a sheer numbers game. Oh, yeah. They have to overwhelm. We think that we're beyond this. We think that we are beyond people overwhelming the government by force. When, For example, when people look in Brazil, they're like, oh, so you're saying you want the, a military coup? Well, hold on a second. The context does matter if people feel as though not only have their elections, but certainly in this case, their very basic human rights, freedoms, any form of liberty have been stolen from them. There's nothing wrong in that case with a coup if the coup is if the coup is largely spurred on because you're being welded into your apartment. Yeah. And here's actually a guy, I haven't seen this clip yet, yeah, but we pulled it in. Um, he's getting, I guess, a haircut and he let the cops have it. For those listening on audio, he's in a barbershop chair and he's telling them, we don't need you here to the cops. Go home. Go home. Get out of here. And now there are people in there clapping. Also, that's odd that that guy's in a barbershop wearing a beret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weird fashion. They really thing. messed up my hair. They just take a little off the side so I can um, wear beret. Yeah. This is my new thing. Maybe that's it. They don't have all have bowl cuts. It's all beret cuts. I'm going yeah. to bring a beret back. Other people are like, no, 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 no. You're not bringing a beret back. Come no on. work. Work is work is stupid. <laughs> Why are work is stupid? Work is trendy. No trendy. Work is retard. No, 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 no beret. Come on. Oh, no beret. Look like uh, dumb. Look very stupid. No beret. Sam McKinnison wore one. Please, please, just take it off. I do a great Sam McKinnison. I go, oh, oh, oh! Oh, police coming to wear me to my apartment! Oh! <laughs> it's a really weird, several layers yes, deep. Yes. You think the Chinese Rob Sam bad. I was married for two years. What? Ah! <laughs> Chinese Sam McKinnison. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I wake up one morning and they say they will me to my apartment. I say, will me to my apartment. I'm in hell. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, God love him. And by the way, here's a, here's a guy who uh, must have balls of steel. China BBs uh, started a chant. <laughs> he was shouting the Patrick Henry slogan, give me. I didn't even know that they knew this. And I don't yeah. know if I would not be. I, I would have no way of knowing that they're even familiar with the slogan, the give me liberty or give me death. He has a Superman backpack. That's true. Wait till he finds out that Superman's now gay. Oh, oh. I think he's talking about the real one. His Buzz Lightyear <laughs> underwear. The one with Paralysis. Yes. Paralysis. Right? Paralysis. How in the world are these it. videos getting out? By the way, one of the reasons we're going through all of these from all different parts of the country, different groups of people, is to show you that this is unprecedented in Chinese history. This is not like a single protest, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But how in the world are these things getting out? I know that there was a note in there that maybe the internet service is being cut in certain areas, like the yeah. government is trying to respond. We're not able to confirm all that yet, no. so we don't want to come. I don't yeah. want to come come to you with information that we can't confirm. By the way, everything that we are reporting for you right now, uh, all references are available at lottoscrowder.com. You can always go check them out. Link in the description. Yeah, but they're controlling the media. Yeah. How in the world are these things getting out? I mean, this is one of the greatest reasons for you to look at right now. If, if you think that, that big tech should be able to do whatever they want to do, it means that China's videos would never get out. Right. They would never, ever, ever get out if there is complete 100% control. So obviously somebody's doing something or asleep at yeah, the Yeah, they're switch. able to bypass it somehow. Yeah, somehow, which is fantastic. Otherwise, the world wouldn't know. But keep in mind, these people are facing, in some instances, certain death or being arrested, jailed for the rest of their lives. And they have decided that it is enough and they're standing up. What's your excuse? That you might lose your job? That you might be ostracized on Facebook by your 75-year-old aunt with an immune-compromised system? Like, what is your excuse? And by the way, this has gotten so dire now. There are actually reports of plainclothes officers going in to now rough up protesters. <laughs> That's not cool. That's no, not cool. Even even scarier than that, we have another clip. Uh, some of the authorities have started abusing and arresting, and this is always what happens, right? If you control information, mm -hmm. we've talked about this here. When people say, "Hey, who do you think uh, will be the next uh, Republican kid?" It it's not that relevant to me. If you would pick the power of Washington D.C. or even the White House over the power of Hollywood, 
over the power of media and certainly big tech, yeah. I think you absolutely need a cat scan. You think Donald Trump was the most powerful man? He was removed some, from society with a snap of the fingers, deplatformed. That's why the gatekeepers are so important. You have people now, you have these tech oligarchs who are more powerful than national governments. And by the way, they are. They, they are the, the, the glue that bonds international governments together who want to work against their own citizens. You're seeing it right now in real time. I cannot stress to you enough the gravity of this. Uh, they have uh, right now, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't have confirmation on all of them, but I do know that they've been arresting foreign journalists, and we do know for sure that they've even arrested one BBC reporter. This is, these are authorities in China. You say that's a BBC reporter? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is right there. Now, here's the thing. Is that terrible? Sure. But let's also be clear. We're several steps in there of allowing your autonomy to be removed. Sure, China's really bad. I understand that. But does a BBC reporter really have a leg to stand on when it's BBC, when it's government-funded news? The same thing in Canada, CBC? You can bitch about corporate media, man. Sure. What about when it's government media? Mm -hmm. And we'll get to Canada in a second, right? These are steps that take place. Once the government takes over the media, then the government says, you know what? We can, we can now legislate hate speech laws on tech platforms that were meant to be open. Open, open platforms. The digital town square. So, yeah, obviously I don't think this person should be arrested by the Chinese communist government. But would that BBC reporter support... American, would he support us being deplatformed for saying things that would never be allowed on the BBC? It's incremental. It's the frog in the, the, yeah. the, the pot of, of boiling water. By the way, hit the like button right now to show some support with the Chinese people because uh, you know that YouTube is not a fan of this being covered. Well, it's also comparing. It's the government comparing China to their own government. Right. So it looks less violating. Right. That's all it really is. Yeah. At least uh, we're not as bad as those guys. Exactly. Yeah, at least we're not 100%. as bad as those guys. Yeah. We just yeah we, we don't we don't weld people into their apartments. We just remove your ability to make a living ah. if you step off the reservation and say something unpopular that we'll label as hate speech. Well, also, right. when was the last time you really had Thanksgiving? 2019. Hmm. I mean, when you think about it, like when was the last time this actually felt like America? Hmm. Like it really felt like you were going into Christmas. I'd say probably 2019, yeah. and it's because of what you're looking at right now. But now we have 19 year olds saying how they're going to get communism right. Right. But you can look at <laughs> an entire know how to do it. nation of a billion people yeah. trying to break free from it. Uh, okay, who did get it right? Well, not China. I'm not talking about China. Well, I'm not talking about Stalinist Russia. Oh, I'm not talking about Leninism. Oh, I'm talking about Mark. And what they end up going to is they end up going to uh, the Catalonians, uh, right, where they're sort oh, of revolution. Well, and that's, I think it was, was it from 34 to 37 before they collapsed under the pressure very of quickly. the Soviets coming in? Uh, it's one of the, and they, like, it's anarcho syndicate socialism. This is what they'll teach in college, by the way. And it is absolutely absurd because when that happened, you just had factions of socialists, by the way, marauding packs of murderers, killing other socialists. And it lasted like three and a half, four years. If I'm off, I'm only off by one year. I guarantee you it wasn't more than five. It has never, that is the most successful successful example of socialism or communism that people can point to. I did a segment on it years ago. You can search it on Mug Club. You can't search it on YouTube because it's been memory hold. So why is this protest unique? And I think, Gerald, you can yeah. probably... Uh, so, yeah. So we actually had a Cambridge professor, William Hurst. He actually said that there have been five main kind of groups of contention in China. So in the United States, we think, okay, a protest kind of catches fire and it spreads across the United States because there's nothing really to stop it. And a lot of times people get out in the streets. So look at BLM, right? Nobody right. would stop that, even though they were actually burning down businesses and trying to kill people. But they made a lot of money and bought people. a lot of real estate. They, yes, did. they did. Yes, yes, yes. So typically they kind of segment into like labor, rural, students, urban governance, or systemic political dissent, right? Or systematic, sorry. So those are typically the groups of protest. And what you're seeing right now... They tend to be kind of independent, yes, right? Different independent factions. very groups, so they can't coordinate nearly as well. And especially when the government is controlling media and they control social media specifically they it makes it much harder to kind of get together they even control doors to your doors. junior suite apartment yes, yes. that's <laughs> true uh tip welding has that effect uh, so it will do it right what we're seeing right now is it's not students in one place or it's not labor people in another place it's not just zero covid measures in one place it is all of these different places these protests kind of 
sparking all over the country yeah. and all of these different groups coming together. That's what most people don't realize that we've never seen before in right. China. And so that's why it's different this time. We don't know necessarily where it's going to go, right? There's some It could be the protests could either fizzle out. There could be some yeah. kind of incredible repression from the government. Um, there could be some kind of concession from the government and change because they'd rather do that than go to war with their citizens. Uh, I think, and, and you and I have talked about this, we think the the harsh kind of squashing of the protest is one way that they'll go, maybe an overreaction. And right. an overreaction could involve Taiwan, yeah. right? If you feel like the country is being viewed as weak by the outside world, you've got these protests going on all over the place, and you're an authoritarian regime, what do you need to do? It's kind of like a mafia boss. If you're viewed as weak, you need to make some big statement. And this does matter. Something crazy. Yeah, because in Taiwan, actually, uh, the for those who don't, like DPP, uh, the Democratic Progressive Party, and it doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means, but in Taiwan, um, they're, uh, this uh, president... Uh, Tsai Ing-wen, I don't know, she stepped down as a party leader after a slew of local election losses for that party, yeah. the Democratic Progressive Party. The opposition party, the KMT, I think it's pronounced the uh, Kuomintang, uh, they won a lot of mayoral races, including Taipei. They're traditionally, surprisingly, more pro-China. Yeah. So in other words, they could say, hey, there's surprised. some weakness, and yeah. maybe there's a time right now to reunify, but under our terms, mm -hmm. there are a lot of dynamics at play here. Yeah. that I think people may be overlooking. But what could be the spark is the protests from people across the country. It's not just yeah. one isolated group. No, no, no. It's not one isolated group and the, the Chinese government to stay in power because you don't just think about other countries invading China. You think about other leaders within China, right? We watched, and I think it was the former uh, prime minister that was escorted away from the table, basically, in that one video a few weeks ago or a month ago that we yeah, saw. Yeah, like a month ago, yeah. They basically have to, it's kind of like this, the, the, the Game of Thrones for them. If they don't appear strong within the party, somebody from within the party will eat them. They will be gone. They will be taken out, and a new leader will be put in place. So you can't let protests go on forever. You can't let them run amok all over the country. You have to prove that you are strong in an authoritarian regime. Yeah. And so they could take that step because they would be like, okay, well, somebody's going to come after me. Same thing with Putin. Putin has to look strong to all of the other people. Otherwise, somebody will oust Putin. And also, this is why feminism has to die. Look, let me explain. <clears throat> You're looking at this right now through the lens of <laughs> that could never happen. <laughs> That could never happen way. here. Yeah. Right. right? People go, oh, that could never happen. You're talking about people, what? men out there who are willing to risk their lives. Is it completely outside of the realm of possibility that there could be some kind of guerrilla warfare? By the way, that happens across the globe on a regular basis. This idea that women out there, and statistically it's not true, that they want a sensitive man. They want a man who is at home with the kids just as much as them. They want Mr. Mom who's changing the diapers. And they don't really want someone who is a savage, you know, who is an absolute. No, no, no. Look, you are only a few meals away only a few meals away from this country being the road. You don't understand how quickly it can change. And do you think people right there now, women who are facing being welded into their apartments who can't leave to go get formula for their babies, do you think that they want their husbands to be Mr. Do you think they want them to be docile? No. When push comes to shove, women want men to go out and do what men are supposed to do. And by the way, that's the cross we bear. I'm not one of those men's rights people saying, well, you, you fight your own battle. I am perfectly happy to do it. Just don't question the way in which we do it. You are four meals away from needing that man to do what a man has done throughout all of human history. And if you, if you with your girlfriends act as though that's not what you want, you're lying to yourselves, and you might only find out when it's too late. I'm not talking about a man who comes home and starts swinging at you because you got the, you got the soup wrong. I'm talking about a man who might be a little bit difficult to live with because he's got a backbone. Those are the people who are, and I'm sorry, it's not feminists. It's never feminists. It's never weak men. Those are the people who are going to be the catalyst for change. If people are no longer going to be welded into their apartments in China, it's going to be because of the men who've been pushed aside as useless in modern society. You always want them. Unfortunately, you might reach a point where you call on them and they're not there because you have bred them out. Just be careful what you wish for. And here's something else I wanted to talk about. What's happening in China, just to drive this home, could never happen here in the United States. We think that we're somehow beyond the yeah. idea of, well, war even, but certainly some kind of civil war, or certainly some kind of authoritarian regime that needs to be stepped down, or certainly the infringement on our rights that would be so extreme where we say, How, when did this happen? When did we lose it? Except it basically did happen in America light, commonly known as Canada, with the trucker convoy. Freedom. This is for freedom. Downtown Ottawa, the centre still paralysed. Police putting up fencing around government buildings. Around 400 trucks are still here. 
leaflets are being handed out. They're telling the truckers to leave the area now or risk arrest and vehicle seizures. We've been bolstering our resources, developing clear plans and preparing to take action. In you are why I don't unilaterally back the blue. Directly with the unlawful protesters. We've told them they must leave and we have warned them the consequences of disobeying these rules. Zip it. What are the consequences? What are the consequences? In Canada, only man allowed to have a gun? Comment below if you remember. And, and before I get into it, we'll have all the references available. If you can see the similarities between China and Canada. One's welding the apartment. The other one is, you know, putting the boot on your truck, which again is how you make a living. Less severe? Sure. Still pretty severe. So let's actually contrast and compare, see where there are similarities between what's happening in China versus what happened in Canada. So let's go first to the Orient, China. In case you thought this was getting too serious. Authorities <laughs> spared no expense. <laughs> Woo. They seized millions in assets uh, from uh, detained business owners, right, in Xinjiang. Okay. That seems pretty severe. Yeah. Yes. But let's go to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Trudeau froze the funds of the convoy protesters, oh. which, by the way, should be absolute. That, to me, is reason enough for revolution. But the Canadians didn't do it. Yeah. You missed Froze your chance. Your bank account. In other words, if you do not revolt when people's accounts are being frozen and people are being arrested for peacefully protesting, I guess maybe when they weld you into your apartment, I don't know. I don't know what it takes. Yeah. You know, the, the great sin they committed was having a truck parked downtown and honking occasionally. Yes. And that was bank bank forfeiture. Basically, you just can't have any access to money. Oh, so you can't feed your family or pay your bills mm -hmm. or anything. And there's That's there great. are new developments that are even worse. If, again, what would the left do if completely un unfettered? What, what what would China do, the CCP, if they had absolute power? I think you kind of know because they sort of have. Now they're being stepped back a little bit. What would Democrats do if they had absolute power? What would Trudeau do, by the way, who is almost a deity for the Democrats? Really, their saints are Fauci and they light a scented candle from uh from from, from asshole doodle company for, yes. for Trudeau. <laughs> Trudeau is all about power. If anybody thinks he's not, you're completely blind. Closest thing to him is Whitmer in Michigan. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. They, she is the worst, and she will run for president. If she runs for president, if she has a majority, you will have what you just saw in Canada here in the United States. We are not that far off. You are two decisions away from something this severe happening here. Okay, Stock so let, home. let's go back to uh, China. Okay, so China, they arrested, and they're threatening to arrest more protesters. Must delete or face arrest. Well, how do you arrest them? What if they don't want to be arrested? Violence. Two people at the BBC detained. I just saw that in the yeah. deal there. Not just the one. Jeez. But that's just off in a faraway land, the mystery of the Orient. Mm. That couldn't happen here in North America. Well, hold on a second. Let's go to Canada again. Yeah. Is there something comparable? Well, you have Trudeau's thugs. They arrested hundreds of convoy protesters. Mm. Mm -hmm. Again, parking a car. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that the, I don't have a problem with the cops because I think they're all systemically racist. I have a problem with the police who enforce unconstitutional laws. Right. I have a problem with the police who are willing to use force against their citizens who don't comply. So back the blue unilaterally? Nope. Nope. And especially now. There are not enough good cops out there. And if there are, you are not speaking out enough. Certainly not in Canada. So let's go back to China. We're giving you an A-B comparison here. Uh, police brutally assaulted citizens during the 2020 Hong Kong security law protests. Here's a clip. What is she, 80 pounds? Good God. In China, that's considered average. Well, sure. It's just such an example of weakness, though. Right. Like, let's go. Yeah, just shooting people. And that could never, and by the way, we're not talking about an, a, a situation where a cop has, you know, someone pulls a knife on them or, or someone reaches for the cop's taser, right, where you have to make difficult decisions. That's not lost. I mean, we're talking about police beating up people solely for the act of protesting. Yeah. Uh, now, that, of course, is extreme. That's about as extreme as you get. 
Yeah, they were fine for not uh, socially distancing. I don't know if you saw the little the the the, the letters there. Right. The, the reason this girl was tackled, <laughs> the reason <laughs> that this twelve year old girl that was such a threat to your regime was tackled is because she was too close to her brother. Right. And maybe a right. few other people in the crowd potentially. But it was perfectly healthy to have four grown men pile on her. Yes, indeed. Right. Like yeah. it was a Disney audition. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you absolute Nickelodeon. Yes. Please. Sorry, Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah. Dan Schneider Nick for after show. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick at night. So this happened in China. That couldn't happen. Canada obviously isn't that severe. Let's go to Canada for a second. Is there anything? Well, well sorry, that's right. Police angrily beat convoy protesters. Right? Oh. Those were report. Uh, there were many reports of that. And here's something else. This was recent news. It's just sort of. It, it is bizarre that all of these things. Sort of the timing is is, is lining up. Uh, Trudeau's cabinet wanted to use tanks. On the protesters. What? Yeah, Justice yeah. Minister David Lametti texted uh, Public Safety Minister Marco Mendocino saying, you need to get the police to move and the CAF if necessary. Then uh, Mendocino replied, how many tanks are you asking for? And Lametti answered, I reckon one will do. Huh. And uh, by the way, I don't know if you know this, this is something like, you shouldn't be surprised huh. because there's, there's photographic evidence that actually Trudeau did send a tank to Edmonton. We have a leaked image. Yeah. Mm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, here's the thing, too. There, there needs to be some accountability for people on the right, like Elon Musk, for example, did support the Canadian truckers at the time, yeah. saying Canadian truckers rule, freedom is being stripped away one piece at a time until it's gone. It hasn't said anything yet about what's happening in China. Yeah. This is one of those things. Look, if you're in charge of Twitter right now, and I get it, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun to be had on Twitter. It's not lost to me. It is fun. Well, what about China? And this is the problem. This is why I'm not saying the, I'm not saying that he's a bad actor. I am saying that it is tough when you are beholden to other nations financially. Tesla has some major production in China, um, yeah. and I just. I hope he comes out and says something. I think a lot of these companies should come out and say something, right? How many times NBA does it take? I know you're you're just begging to be able to get in there and all your shoes and clothes are made there by children who can't barely eat food by what you pay them. But what does it take for you guys to actually stand up and say, you know, the people are more important than our profits? Yeah. All the all of the entertainment industry, Disney included specifically, all of these major corporations that have production facilities over there. You guys have no balls. Yeah. Move Just your stand up and say, yeah. move your manufacturing, ma move it to Mexico, United States, can I, somewhere other than China. Or you know what? United States would be the best. Or you, well, not necessarily. Sometimes well, made in America union. means made American crap. Well, yeah. No, but uh, even if you still have your manufacturing there, well, still speak out against them and let the cards fall where they may. Yes. Yep. Which, by the way, you can send your email to tips at loudwithcrowder.com. We've been looking yeah. for an American manufacturer for mugs for years. Yeah. Either no one can meet capacity, or they don't have the capability. We've even looked into Taiwan. They more so specialize in advanced chipsets. We would love to have them 100% made in America. They're etched. They're painted in the United States. But you don't hear me doing China's bidding. Hey, if they say, well, we're not, hey, well no, make more mug. Well, then, sorry, you guys are probably going to get a crappier mug that'll be a screen print. That's yeah. the best we can do in the United States right now. But don't allow yourself to be muzzled because a huge component of your company is financially dependent on China. There's nothing wrong with doing some business. or And by the way, there are some Chinese companies that create unbelievably high-quality products, just to be clear. And there are some American companies that create total, utter dog shit. It's not lost on me. <laughs> but... That shouldn't change the fact that the people in positions of power who have the ability to make a difference should be using their voices to make a difference. How much – let me ask you this, and this is a – you guys can comment below, and, and please do share the show. Tim, you can hit all the buttons as I'm talking. Sharing, hit the rumble button. We're going to have to go here. How many people out there you, – you know this, Gerald, about me specifically, is I will get – with what we do here, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. It is not an easy job. And I will get beaten down and I will get exhausted. And I can make it really far with just a win, just a yeah. pat on the back. It's like, oh, man, that's a win under my sails. Yeah. And a lot of people are out there that way. A lot of men, you know, if you, if you guys comment below, you know, how, how touching is it to you or how motivating is it when your woman or someone you love or someone you respect, it gives you a pat on the back. It goes a long way, right? You feel invigorated. How much of a wind at their, at their back do you think this, it would be for the Chinese people right now? if they felt like someone like Elon Musk had their back. People like, I mean, whether it's Donald Trump, but people like Elon Musk, or even, of course, a long shot people like Zuckerberg, yeah, right, Disney. Hey, what if the NBA had their back? 
What if all the gay soccer players had their back? Do you think that would push them just a little bit more? Because right now, they're doing it on an empty tank as far as approval, as far as support globally. It would go a long way. And, we have a, and, and right now, we have a lot of people watching. We have a lot of people who support us. I'm incredibly grateful. We try and use this platform for as much good as we can do while still remaining an entertainment program. But we can only do so much. Elon, how about you do something? I think you're right. Well, I mean, I know you're right. I mean, take a risk when it actually is a risk. Not yeah. when you're going to whatever Iran and you're wearing a rainbow flag, but you're also protected by everyone there. Yeah. Do or, something that actually matters. And these, people are, these people can die and probably will. Many of them will. Many of them yeah. will. Many of them will be beaten, assaulted. It, it, for what? For, for wanting the same freedoms that we have been pissing on for the last three years. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that I support the idea of bringing over mass refugees. Okay, so don't mistake me here. But what I am saying is... When we're talking, we, 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 we uh, qualify everyone who's leaving, whether it's Mexico or coming through Mexico, you know, from El Salvador, Honduras. Shit, let me just, shithole countries, uh, as they've been referred yeah, to commonly. Uh, they're not being persecuted. They just don't like living in a third world country where there are no opportunities. We say, well, hold on a second. These people, they're, they're claiming asylum. They're asylum seekers. Or we have refugees, you know, uh, military-aged Muslim men leaving Syria, right, leaving Iraq, right? They're, they come over and we had this mass just influx of refugees. Hey, if you're go where is the push for the left? Where is Joe Biden right now? Where is the push saying, let's bring over as many of these Chinese protests? And I'm not saying that I would support mass migration. But I am saying if the left believes what they claim to believe as far as supporting people seeking asylum, refugees. I would certainly say that the people being welded into their own apartments have a stronger claim to actually fleeing persecution from their government than someone who lives in a city in Mexico that the government doesn't care where they live or die. It's just a crappy city. So in other words, where's the left right now? Where's the left talking about these refugees and supporting them? We see their heart for Ukraine, mm -hmm. money laundering capital of the world. We see what about the people right now speaking out against the Chinese government? And, and just saying, hey, we hope that there's no violence, we hope they can come to a resolution, isn't enough. Our leaders need to be, if, if you're going to late. intervene in Ukraine and Russia, you certainly should say, yeah, get them, stick it to the CCP. Like to see something like that. Do you have any idea how invigorating that would be to these people? And instead, silence, silence, silence. Anyone who's silent, especially in a position of leadership, it, look, yeah, I'm not going to say that you should be ashamed of yourself, but I have no respect for you. And you know deep down in your quiet time when you look in the mirror, you have no respect for yourself because there's no reason to say nothing at this point, and it's unjustifiable. Share the show, like it. We are going to go to Mug Club and actually mm. speak with Ginger Snap, yeah. who went to the same alma, uh, alma mater as uh, Xi Jinping. Wow. Yeah, I know. I don't even know why he works here. Did we run a background check? YouTube, piss off. Uh, did we run a background check? <laughs>